Good morning, you guys. Happy Monday. It's Nathan over here at our Collector Plant store. So throughout this week, I'm gonna be doing a little vlog, lots to do, and I'm really excited for you guys to join me. Let's go. So refilling these humidifiers is definitely quite the task in the morning, uh, but I actually really don't mind it. I find it to be kind of meditative, just sort of the back and forth. There's no really thinking to it. It's a good way to get into sort of a relaxed headspace for the day. All right, you guys, now with all 24 humidifiers here and the store refilled, it is time to get the day started. So the first thing I like to do on my Mondays is to go ahead and walk through our retail store before we open, just to kind of get a good idea of what may have sold out over the weekend, what might be needing a little extra help, some TLC. I figured it'd be fun to bring you guys along with me so we can kind of do a tour of the store at the beginning of the week versus at the end of the week so that you can see uh, everything that has changed. So starting up here in our front section, we've got a lot of our begonia, African violets, um, a lot of our more humidity and moisture loving things, uh, variegated African violets in. Looks like quite a few of these sold over the weekend. Checking on our orchids here. These guys are all still doing all right, which is always good to see. Here we've got all of our nodes in front of the garage door. These variegated ginger are one that I have always loved. A really quick grower if you can keep up with the watering for these guys. Um, giving them a lot of bright light will allow them to grow super, super fast. You get that beautiful variegation. We can see these guys are a little bit thirsty as well. Epiprenum pinnatum are definitely quite overgrown. You can see they're growing all the way down to the floor here. The Shangri-La are another one that are a lot of fun. You get that wrinkly foliage when you provide them bright enough light. A lot of people tend to think there's something wrong with them, but when they're wrinkly like that, that means that they are happy. These guys grow super, super fast when you give them a lot of bright light. We'll do a little restock and a little cleanup on our Skindapsis Silver Cloud as well. Chopping back these Skindapsis Officinalis. These guys are quite overgrown and definitely ready to be propagated. Here I can see we'll probably have to restock a little bit on our um, Skindapsis Jade. All right, moving down our next row, we've got a lot of our Hoya. We did a pretty big restock on these guys uh, last week, so we should be good for this week. Got lots of these Sigillatus, Hoya Patella. This is one that often gets overlooked, but I think they are such beautiful plants. You get that really nice dark foliage, and then they're also sort of fuzzy as well. You can see here, it looks like Hoya Matilde was pretty popular this weekend. We're down to just two left. All of our bromeliads. This is a variety that I have been loving lately. Um, these super bright flowers. And just that vertical growth. I think they are visually so exciting. These Bromeliad Gizmo are one that I'm definitely planning on picking up sometime this week for sure. Here we've got a lot of our trailing Monstera. This is a section that will definitely get a good restock this week. We can see we're running low on our Acuminata. Don't have too many Peru out at the moment, which is definitely a must have. These little two and a half inch pots are just $18, so definitely a really great bargain. You can see these guys are really taking off. And then we've got the Standaliana Albo. If you guys don't have one of these, I highly recommend them. Super easy care, and they are just so beautiful. In bright light, you get really nice sectoral white variegation, um, and allowing them to climb makes for a beautiful display. Down here, we've got some Amedrium. This looks like another one that was pretty popular this weekend, which is the Amedrium Medium Variegated. These are the low variegation ones, um, potted up in two and a half inch pots. This was something I was really excited to see when I came in this morning, and that was um, how many of these variegated Heteraceum we sold over this weekend. These are one that are super, super popular, and for good reason. I mean, look at that variegation. So beautiful. 
We've been giving these guys lots of bright light and they have just been loving it. Of course, we've got all the pink princess you could ever want. Definitely take a look at these guys next time you're in the store. We got a beautiful batch in with lots of high variegation. To our last row here, this is where we tend to keep a lot of our more high ticket um, plants. Looks like this guy got a little overwatered over the weekend, so I'll probably pull this one. These Philodendron Majestic we also just put out at the end of last week as well. Really glad to see these guys are still happy. We're down to just two more Dark Lord, so these will be another one that we'll do a bit of a restock on as well. Uh, we are fully stocked on these variegated Domesticum, and we are down to just five left. Looks like we also sold a couple of these Mikan's Halo. This is one that we just started offering for the first time a couple weeks ago. They've been pretty popular. And check out the roots on these Bilite, you guys. These are looking awesome. We uh, brought these in as tissue culture and they have really, really taken off for us. These Tortum look like they were pretty popular this weekend too. And for good reason, I mean, such a beautiful plant. This is one that I have been obsessed with for literally years now. It's time to look through everything in the back. Uh, I've got quite a few propagations going at the moment that I'm sure will need a little extra attention today as they've been left alone over the weekend. Let's see, what are these guys? We've got a lot of our 69686. We've got some glad hands, some lime fiddle here. Uh, this corsifolium is one that I'm really hoping to get to this week. This is easily one of my all-time favorite philodendron, uh, and this guy is getting quite tall. You can see it's actually growing up to this second level, and look how big the leaves on these guys are getting. Really, really incredible here. These Bobsy are another one on my list to chop this week. You can see these guys are getting quite long. So this is easily one of my favorite plants that we've got back here, and that is our variegated Alocasia Sabrina. We're down to just one highly variegated leaf here, but been giving this guy a little extra attention, so hopefully it'll bounce back soon. Check this out. This just popped out the other day, and it is really something special. Check this jungle fever out. Can you believe it? It looks even better in person. It's really, really vibrant, um, but we've got quite a few of these guys. Maybe we'll put one of these up for sale this week. Here we've got the last of our Philodendron Dark Lord that are potted up and ready to be sold. Moving down here, this is everybody's favorite section, and that is all of our Monstera Albo and Thai Constellation. These are all of our mother plants here that were recently chopped up, so if we move down, I'm super, super excited to get these on the website. Look at that half moon leaf. Oh my gosh, these are all really incredible. I chopped them up. Um, about two weeks ago, so definitely some of them should be rooted enough um, to be sold. These are another one I'm super excited to offer here in the store shortly, and that is the Philodendron Florida Beauty. You can see all of these ones that we chopped up late last week. Um, I think, let's see, we've got about 30 of them available, so that will definitely be a fun one to post on the website. A lot of these Philodendron Majestic that are ready to go really large leaves on these guys. Variegated burl marks that we'll probably post on the website today if we have time. We've got nine of them it looks like. We've kind of been trying to clear these guys out, doing some spring cleaning. Um, we're importing lots more uh, anthurium and so we're trying to get rid of some of our older specimen. Here's all of those bilite I was telling you about. Now working our way into the grow room, that's where I tend to focus my attention first, just because that's where a lot of our higher ticket items are. Um, and just with the more intense conditions in here, it's really important that we stay on top of the watering. We've got lots of these Milano Bulata going at the moment, really similar to the uh, Begonia Ferox, but these guys produce the little spikes on their leaves a lot earlier on in their lifespan. We've also got some of the true Ferox hidden back there that we're growing out. This is one that was featured in our uh, variegated plant video, but I figure I'll show it again just because I'm so in love with it, and that is our variegated Birkin. Check out that high variegation there. 
We recently got our hands on 11 of these uh, variegated little fill philodendron. These guys are all roughly the same size and sporting some very high variegation. The Syngonium Aurea will definitely go out today. I potted these guys up late last week, so they are definitely ready for sale. Our variegated Chia Pence. If you guys watched our variegated plant video, you know that our variegated Chia Pence was reaching probably about three to four feet tall. So it's definitely ready to be chopped. So we were able to cut it up into seven um, single leaf nodes. So we've got these guys going here. I think they'll need a little bit more time, um, but definitely one that I'm super, super excited about. Maybe we'll post this week, maybe not. I might let them grow out a bit more. Is our Monstera Aurea. Not one that you come by all that often, but I propagated our mother late last week as well and was able to get eight cuttings. So before I get to all of the exciting projects that I have planned for the week, most importantly, we need to water everything. Everything is definitely looking a little dry from the weekend, so let's waste no time and get started on that. On these prop boxes, I'll just go ahead and sort of mist them. You don't want to uh, have too much sitting water in there um, because then the plant starts to produce water roots as opposed to uh, roots that are more fit for the soil, which is what we're after. So just keeping them moist and then uh, putting these domes over them to maintain that high humidity is what we found works best for getting these plants in moss plugs uh, rooted quite quickly. Once we cut something and put something in a moss plug, we're looking at typically about a week and a half to two weeks before it's well rooted enough to be sold. Um, after watering here in the grow room, the conditions get quite a bit more intense than they already are. So you can see we're sitting at 85% humidity and 80 degrees. So it really is like a little tropical paradise in here. So the way I like to go about getting things ready for sale is I'll grab my list here and then I will grab a handy little cart and then I'll just walk through our grow space uh, and start grabbing what I'm after. It's kind of fun. I can pretend like I'm shopping for myself for a second. First we are after some uh, Florida Beauty cuttings that we'll post today. We're gonna go for five. Let's see. This one's looking quite nice. Got two, three, four, five. All right, next we are off for some Monstera Albo. As I showed you earlier, we have quite a few going. You can see these guys have started to put out some good roots as well. So there's one. This one looks pretty good too. Go three, number four, and five. Let's see, sometimes it takes a second to find what you're looking for. With this many plants, it's hard to keep track of all of them. Nicely variegated through that should be pretty well rooted at this point. Oh yeah, this guy should be good to go. So there's one and two. Next on our list is the Philodendron Bilitae. These ones are quite large. I'm really excited uh, to offer these. To determine when a plant is ready for sale, I'm looking at a couple things. First and foremost, just the overall health and appearance of the plant. Of course, we don't want to sell plants that um, aren't doing so well. So I'll take a look at the leaves, make sure there's no signs of pests or any sort of fungal issues or anything like that. Uh, and then also taking a look at the root system is a really good indicator of the overall health. So here we can see we've got a really nice root system going on this Bilitae. Quite a few leaves on this guy as well as some new growth. So he's definitely ready to find a new home. Look at those roots, you guys. First and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and pot up these variegated Peru. Right now they're just rooted in these little moss plugs. These work really, really great for quickly rooting your plants. I highly recommend them. But we're just gonna pot them up in two and a half inch pots uh, in cocoa coir and perlite, and then these guys will be ready to go. 
Just like that, we've got two variegated Peru all potted up and ready for sale. These guys really are so gorgeous. For our insecticide, lately we've been using the Circadian Sunrise, which we actually do offer both here in store and on our website. It's a little bit more natural um, and has a great peppermint smell, so it's not so offensive like other insecticides can be. Got fungicide, insecticide, water. So I'm gonna take this Bilite here and just quickly spray down those leaves with the Circadian Sunrise insecticide, doing the, both the top and the bottom as well as along the petiole. Now it's really important when you guys are spraying down your plants that you do your best to avoid uh, that insecticide reaching the root system. Your plant will not particularly care for absorbing insecticide. All right, you guys, what you're looking at here is a cart full of plants ready for sale. So let's head to the back and get these guys posted online but I'm getting these ready for the website and then I'm gonna run them over to the houseplant store. And I don't know, maybe I'll take you guys with me and we can say hi to everybody that's working over there today. Hello you guys, we have just made it over to the houseplant location to drop off some orchids I'm to so Sawyer. I'm so excited, thank you for bringing me Of course. Over. They look great. So beautiful. Can't wait for everybody to pick them up in store. Look at this, so many <laughs> flowers going on. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all these trays here. Each of them have got 10 cuttings in them. I'm gonna go ahead and take all these guys out of their cups of water. Give them a good rinse, rinse out the cups, and then take a look at the roots and the nodes to make sure there's no rot going on. While I do have the privilege of working with such um, uncommon plants on a daily basis, I will tell you the nerves of chopping and propping these guys uh, do not go away. I will tell you propagating all of these Monstera, although I was definitely very, very nervous, um, but it is so good to see that Pretty much all of these guys have got really good root systems going. I mean, check out this top cut. Like, that's so good. Wow. Look at this three leaf top cut here. Really, really great roots. We love to see it. And I'm just gonna fill the cups up to right above the node. You don't wanna leave too much of the petiole sitting in water as that's really gonna increase your chances of rot. So the water we've got here in Petra has just got a really light solution of fertilizer in it, which will help promote some root growth and keep these guys nice and nourished while they're under the bright grow lights. Preheat your soldering iron and then stick it straight through. So I'm gonna add a couple drainage holes here in the bottom to prevent any standing water. Now I've got some pre-moistened uh, sphagnum moss. We sell this here in store and online. When you're doing this, it's really important that you don't overdo it on the moss. That's something that I tend to see uh, a lot of people do, but um, you wanna be careful not to suffocate the plant in the moss. So just sort of bunching it around being careful not to keep it too close to the crown of the plant. Nice and loose for some good airflow. And for your moss, this is about the color it should be um, when you're potting your plant up. You don't want it much darker than this. Making your moss too wet is gonna hold way too much moisture against the plant and once again, increase those chances of rot. So you can see it really doesn't take much sphagnum uh, for your plant. We'll stick it in here. And you can see we're leaving some good air pockets there for aeration for this Monstera. I used to use way more moss than this when I was propagating things. Um, and I will tell you, since I've started doing it this way, I've noticed much larger roots, way more roots, um, and that they grow quite a bit faster. Alright you guys, as I sort of wrap up my Monday here off camera, I just propagated a bunch of our Philodendron Squamiferum. So I was able to get about a tray and a half, which will equate to probably about 40 plants or so. The only thing that I've got planned for the rest of the day is just quickly chopping up this Philodendron Aplanatum. This guy has got some crazy aerial roots going. I'll hopefully film that and then we'll sort of tie up all the loose ends for the day and head out. Thank you guys so much for following me around on this Monday and I cannot wait to share Tuesday with you all. 
Tuesdays are always a really exciting day around here. It's when we have our manager meetings in the morning and sort of lay out all of our projects for the week. We figure out all of our promotions and social media. So there'll definitely be lots to share tomorrow and I am so looking forward to that. Peace out, you guys. Yeah.